P-S-A-A-O-S. His space. Ed Smith. I'm sitting here with uh, a good childhood friend, Ed Smith. Uh, I think we, we were kindred souls in a way. Uh, but we're here to give give God some glory and to, and to speak to you about you know, your athletic career and uh, your life, uh, where you came from as a child, uh, and where God's taking you today. And he's taking you a mighty long way, my brother. I know your journey, and uh, hopefully you get to share your journey with, with some of my, my viewers here. Good. I would like to thank Coach Coach Wright and Coach uh, Hooper letting us in this beautiful gym here. You didn't play in this gym, Good. but you ran these floors for RS Central High School. Is that correct? That is correct. You, you can yeah. tell us a little bit about that, Ed. Uh, but before we do that, we're going to go in prayer, okay? All right. Our Father, we come to you as we do every day, again and again and again. We're asking you. Bless, bless this session as we lead people to open the door to you mm. in your greatness and your goodness. And uh, may what Ed and I discussed today be of your glory. Bring you the glory and use us as a vessel to lead in the guide to your everlasting love. These things we ask in your name, our Father. Amen. Amen. Well, Ed, thank you for coming up. Like, this is the second time. So I think everybody needs to understand it. I had you over in my house, and uh, we were doing this session, and I looked at it when we started editing it, and I said, you know, I talk too much. So I'm still learning how to do this. But today is, today is about Ed Smith. Ed Smith. Uh, my mom loves you. I love your mom. Uh, so we're going to talk about a lot of that. But let, let's start with your family. Ed. Uh, tell us a little bit about your family. Oh, wow. I, well, I come from a, I think, amazing family. You know, um, my mom, I give her a lot of credit because she, um, she did, you know, she raised us by herself, you know, basically. And um, she did the best she could. You know, she made sure we had uh, everything we needed. Didn't have a lot of wants, but we had a lot of need. And uh, had a lot of love, too, you know. And, uh, you know, I think that, that I kind of carried that on. Uh, in my life today, you know, with my with my immediate family, um, you know, my my kids, wife, you know, um, try to, you know, uh, create a, a lot of love from the start, you know, and uh, you know when you got a lot of love, you know, that's that means you have a lot of support, you know, and uh, I believe in support. Support uh, definitely will help you get to every level you want to get to in life. So yeah, family. Family is very important. So uh, tell me about your, your family. You have a daughter. Yeah, I have, I have a daughter, two daughters, two daughters, and, 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 a, and I have a stepson and a stepdaughter. Yeah. So it's really four. Uh, married in a blended family. You know, uh, they're doing well. All, all of them are over thirty now, so they they're doing good. I just seen my, my son actually last night with his wife and three kids. Been in the Air Force about thirteen years, and. Uh, that was great seeing them. So we're going to all get together this weekend and make it happen. So, what are their names? Um, Gabrielle is the oldest, and Jonathan, Diamond, and Camille. Yeah. yeah. Diamond's the one I know. I've yeah. seen Diamond the most. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but but to talk about your childhood, you know, I, you know, I grew up, family of 11 down in the hollow. Yeah. We were, your Uncle Ricky and everybody in the neighborhood sort of raised us. You know, yeah. it, was a, it was a neighborhood kind of thing. And uh, but I know you grew up. You were Ed Jr. Yep. Uh, your dad was a basketball player. No, no, no. actually not. No. He's just a tall man. Yeah, he was just a tall man. Yeah, he, he never never played. Uh, you know, the Smith family cousins, first cousins. None of our parents played sports actually. So so, so like, all the all the Smiths that, that ran the courts at RS Central were your cousins. Yeah, first cousins. Really? Yeah, yeah. Boy, that's a tall family. Yeah, yeah, it's huh? a tall family. So I mean, we were all competitive. I think it was eight of us that played played college. You know, so uh, but our, our family, our parents did did not play sports, so that was that was that surprised a lot of people. There are times when I I supervise the group of officials that come in here, and I'll come in here and I'll say hey to Coach Hooper, and then I'll look over and Frances be sitting over there still, yeah. even though her kids ain't. And she said I could see Frances back in the day doing it between the legs. <laughs> no, she never played the game. Yeah, she never played it, but yeah. she I mean she had a chance to see you know me play and 
So that was, my, uh, was pretty good. And, and then her granddaughters, too. Uh, my, my nieces, uh, Lanika and Taylor, they both played in this gym, and they were pretty good, pretty wow. good athletes as yeah. well. I, I remember coming over and seeing them sometimes. They, they, yeah. they, 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 it was in the family. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and I'm going to apologize to our viewers tonight. We are sitting in this empty gym, and my videographers reminded me to keep our voices <laughs> down for the echo. Yeah. This is for the glory of God, so he'll, he'll, this thing called editing, hopefully everything will edit out and be okay. But you never ran on this court here, the palace. No, I didn't. You ran up at, what y'all yeah. call that place up there? The, the dungeon. The dungeon? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. It was down, down in the hole. Yeah. So it was uh, playing at the, the old gym. It was very, very hard for other teams to come in and, and beat us. You know, uh, that tradition was very strong. I think we won a lot of games just off of tradition, too, yeah. and, and having a great coach as well. But um, you, you, know, played I, for, you played for great Stacy Lane, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Coach, Coach Lane. This gym, this gym is named after yeah, Stacy Lane Gymnasium. Yeah. Man was some kind of coach, some kind of a. Uh, Leader was he? Yeah, he That's was. You know, he, he was. Um, I, I was just telling Coach, all right? He he was very fair. Um, I, I can't even rem remember him getting really really upset. Uh, but uh, he had a lot of star ball players, and uh, he knew how to keep us in check. Our egos in check. And uh, I think he, you know, I, people used to say, well, if I had that much talent, I would win too. But I think that was really hard on him to have that much talent and, and know how to juggle yeah. playing time and making sure all of us, you know, got the, the right amount of playing time that we needed. And he also pushed for us to uh, to get, you know, scholarships. Yeah. He did well. Yeah, yeah, he did well. You know, a lot of, a lot of respect for him. And I think, you know, Iris Central did a great job in, in honoring the person naming the Janine. Well, help me, help me here a little bit. So you had the Vince Hamilton great team and, yeah. and, uh, and the Kincaid team. Where were you at in that? Yeah. I was, my man, I'm 60 now. Where were you at in that, in that mix? I, I was actually in the middle. You know, I graduated in 1985. And 1985, we probably had the best team. We we was ranked number one in the state and, and probably should have won the state You and who were, you, who were your other uh, four horses? We had, um, man, we had, well, we had the Tim Kincaid's, the Reggie Smith, the Kevin Millers, Belise Young, myself, Charles Moore, Rodney Harris. I mean, we were stacked. It was that. Charlie you know, Moore. Yeah. And then we also had uh, Andrew Horton was on that team as well. So, I mean, um, we had a deep, deep team that year. But we probably should have won the state. But, you know, we, did, we didn't win it. But the next year they won it in 1986. Yeah. That was the first year in the, in the Dean Dome. That's and the year I, you I, left. That was, yeah, that was my freshman year in college. So we're going to talk about college a little bit. But, but talk about running this floor and, and growing up, growing up in a single-parent home. Gold Hill, right over here, Gold Hill Church. We yeah. both, we both, you know, I love that song. Uh, and I, I said in a lot of my interviews, I mentioned that song, Grandma. I mean, she got me talking to Jesus. Yeah. Uh, what what Francis instilled in you, and I know what Carrie Vance and, and Delcy Brown instilled in me, probably what saved our lives. Yeah. Yeah. Would you agree? Oh, yeah, most definitely. You know, we, she, uh, you know, you had to go to church. You know, my mom was a Christian woman. Uh, I don't care how late. Late, you stayed out. You just getting up and you're going, yeah. going to church. You know, we, she instilled that in us, uh, and you know, telling us, you know, how, how important prayer was yeah. in, in our everyday lives. Um, so yeah, it was it was great, you know, to be able. We was very, uh, you know, church oriented people. You know, of course, we live right across the street from from the church, but um, you know, I, I have a lot of great memories of you know going to church as as a youth. So that was that was good. Um, my mom, you know, she was a single parent, but um, like I said, she she did she did really good, uh, you know. To when I look back on it, there's some some amazing things, you know. She had the ass on the chest, superwoman, you know, uh, to raise us and, and make sure we had what we needed. So that was that was good, I, and I try to you know uh, keep that in my everyday life now of those memories. And then growing up, you know, in the old household too, and of course, Coach Coach Fuller's household. Yeah. Harris Ford, you know, I, 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 lived, I lived in all of those houses. Yeah. But we, you know, we grew up playing sports and we were very competitive, you know. Uh, so I think a lot of those things, you know, because you know, I grew up in an area where we didn't have the AU mm -hmm. and the travel basketball and stuff like the kids had, have today. But we created our own, you know. Yeah. You know oh, did we? Yeah yeah. 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 So so I grew up in a family of 12, 11. And I was 
right in the middle. I was a mean little kid. I was a mischievous kid. I picked on you a little bit, didn't I? <laughs> no, I mean, but that was, you know what? I, I mean, as I got older, I, you know, um, I think, you know, those things helped me because it, it was, I looked at it as being constructive, constructive criticism. And uh, I, I know when I got to college, my coach was like, he was on me really, really hard. And I was like, man, you know, can I, can I get a break? But when I when I look at it, look, look back at it, you know, he was just pushing me yeah. and maximizing yeah. me, you know. So I, I look at it as, as, as that as being constructive. I remember some of the stuff. We we, we, we had a little dirt court yeah. behind Darius Fuller's house. Yeah. And it was a dunkable. We lowered the goal about eight foot rocket dunk. Yeah. <laughs> and I tried to punish you every day. Did I not? Yeah. yeah. So let's take a break. Okay, we'll come back. Punish you a little bit, didn't it? <laughs> you we did. Go, we set the goals at about maybe eight foot, nine foot, nine nine foot, foot. and uh, I'd come down the lane, big head, big <laughs> lanky head, and I'd dunk on you, huh? Make you so mad, you'd go home really. What? You know, Darius told me later in life uh, that he thought that made you a better ball player. I ain't trying to take credit for it. Right. What did that do to you? Because you would, you would leave. Pretty doggone man. Yeah, yeah. What, 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 what? You know, I'm not proud. I, I, I tried to punish you. Yeah, yeah. But I mean, you know. And that, I, try, I that, tried to make you better, but but how did that make you feel? And what, what, tell us about how that, that transitioned through your life a little bit. Well, I, I think it, it, it definitely made me better. It made me competitive and it made me, uh, you know, meaner. You know, because I, I, I would, I have. I was trying to make you mean. Yeah, but I it, but it, but it, but it I did. Wanted, I it, wanted it, you it. to fight. Right. Yeah. Well, yeah. well, that's what it. Yeah. That's what it did. So, so I, I was slim. You know, when I first went to college, I was, I was one ninety five. You know, I was real slim. Six what? So six six one ninety five. Yeah. But I had a chip on my shoulder. You know, because of that, and uh, so I, I, I played. You know, hard all the time. You know, even in practice or even in a pickup game. I know I can remember uh, Darius. He used to. I came home one summer and I used to play, and uh, we was at, at some park. We was playing. And Darius, he was like, uh, "Yeah, take it easy on me a little bit, man." Because <laughs> cause I was, you know, I didn't care if he was six feet or seven feet. I was, I was, yeah, aggressive, yeah. Uh, and I, I think I, I played like you know relentless basketball, you know. And then you know when you're young and you get uh, pushed. You know, by the, the older guys and the bigger guys, it, it definitely makes you a better player. How, how much know? of that drive was it to, to you grew up without your father in the house? Yeah. How much did you want to succeed to, to justify, hey, you know? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it was tough. You know, single parent household, I didn't really, you know, not having that, that, that father figure, you know, it, it played a, a negative effect in my life, but it also fueled me as well. Yeah. You know, especially when I went to college, you know, I, I kind of wanted my dad to see what, you know, what you was missing, you know. So so it, it definitely gave me the edge for us. Uh, it made me persevere more. Uh, it made me, you know, to strive more and, and just to be the best that I can be. But it also made me, I think it made me a better parent as well. Hey, man, and, that's where I was yeah, going. Yeah, 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 yeah. So how, how did your relationship later in life with your dad, how did it uh, I didn't well, after it, college. Yeah, um, well, it, it, um, we always had a pretty good relationship. He just, you know, I don't know if you knew, but when we were young, my older sister and I, we we uh, would go live the summer. Yeah, I knew he was involved yeah, in life. I, I would see him. Yeah, so, yeah. in Ohio, and uh, but that actually gave me another look at life, you know, because it was city. You know, you coming from a small town, uh, spending your whole summers in, the, in in a big city, Columbus, Ohio, and. Uh, you know, How them city boys treat you? Oh, it was it was good, but you know when I got older and I started, to, I, I used to go to Ohio State University and play against those guys, yes. and they, I didn't know they that. and they used to be like, "Wow, you know what what college you go to?" And I'd tell them, "Wingate." They they never heard of that back then, and you know so that gave me confidence too. So going, you know, playing in, uh, against the competition in, in in big city, you know that that gave me the edge too. But my dad, we we, we have a good relationship now. We talk. I could probably talk to him for three hours. Wow, you know, if I don't get off the phone with him, but uh, but I, I wasn't I wasn't bitter yeah. about it, especially when I become an adult and a parent myself. You know, um, I just some things nothing is perfect, and some things you just got to go. But I think it made me a better person. It gave me a lot of character, and uh, I think it made me a, a, 
a good father. I feel like I'm a good father. It's a testament to the father you are, man. Outstanding and what you're doing with your life now. Well, let's go back a minute to Darius. Uh, like on this court, Darius maybe set the record for wins or something. Yeah. Uh, yeah. My cousin, he used to tell me, I remember one time Darius told me, because I thought we, we were big, big kidders in each family. Yeah, yeah. Darius and I, we could, he said, boy, you're a fool. <laughs> and I thought he just, hey, you no, he was serious, you're a fool. <laughs> and it wasn't until he died that I realized that a lot of my life I was living as a fool, you know, doing crazy things. We'll, we'll talk about a little bit of that in a minute, but what did Darius mean to you? What, I mean, what did he mean? I mean, he was he meant so much to so many people. Yeah, yeah. What, what did he mean to you? Well, we, we were we were great friends. I mean, we grew up together. I think I met Darius when I was five years old. We just we just clicked. We never had a fallout. Never had a fallout. And uh, I mean, he, when I used to come home. He used to, he used to, he was proud of me, you know, my accomplishments. And he used to tell me, man, you know, um, that you know, I'm proud of you. I, I, I wish I could do some of the things that, that, that you've done for us on, on the court. And um, but I told him, you know, I, I said that my destiny, part of my destiny was meant to to be away from my hometown, and your part of your destiny was to to stay here. And uh, you know, because he had a, he had more passion than I did, you know, for the for the game. Uh, you know, and people you say, man, well, why you didn't coach? And that coaching just wasn't my thing. And Darius, uh, I can remember how passionate he was, and I can remember how him getting cut, you know, doing the error. Darius was good was a good ball player. A lot of people don't don't, don't may not well, you know. You forget that. I dumped yeah. on him too. Yeah, yeah. 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 I mean, let's not forget. But he came through an era where there was so much competition. There were so many good players coming. Uh, through here at that time, you know, he just, and, and he accepted that. But his passion for the game, I think, you know, uh, rolled over into his, his adulthood and into his coaching as well, you know, because, you know, he sent a lot of players to college. He coached my, my two nieces. Yeah. And uh, not only at our essential, but he, like his funeral was said, you know, he, he helped other kids even in this area, you know, get, I know he would call me and, you know, and, and tell me about some of the players he was trying to get into college. So his passion for the game, you know, uh, God meant for him to stay here and, and coach. And uh, and he had a great a great coaching career. And uh, when he passed, I told his, his sister Carolyn that, you know, he, he probably accomplished things like an 80 year old man. He That's died right. young, but he but he lived a full life. God has a plan. Then. Yeah, and uh, and his legacy will, will will forever be you know yeah. remembered. Yeah. So. And I, I think now, I, I got a, a wonderful prayer group I'm in in the mornings and talk about God's will in your life. And Darius fulfilled his will. You know, and it's like, when, when, when are you, you need to know why you're here on this earth. Dar I think Darius knew why he was here. Yeah. And basically, when, when you fulfill God's will, there's nothing else to do but go home. Yeah. People mourn. Why do you have to go so soon? Why do you? And I said, well, why am I still here? I wasn't half the man Darius was. Well, let's, let's wait until the story is written and see what kind of man you are. That's a change in me, it came late. Uh, but it, it brings me to, to God's purpose in your life. I think you found yours. Uh, bumped your head a little bit. And you and I suffered through some of the same addiction things early in life. Bump your head a little bit. But tell us about the journey, because God took you from a place to an outstanding person, and man that you are now. And it makes me want the world to know the redemption story of Ed Smith, the great person you are now, and how God has delivered you to that point. That I, I, I just think so highly of you right now. You know? mm, yeah, thank you, thank you. I mean, yeah, I mean, um, you know, of course, you know, making, you know, I made some bad choices. You know, young and uh, doing things uh, I shouldn't have been doing. But uh, the, I think the, the greatest thing now is, you know, it was things I, I I thought I would never stop doing that I don't do anymore. Absolutely. You know, and uh, and I didn't think I would es escape, you know, those some of those things. Um, but you know, uh, going through what I went through, you know, uh, it, I definitely learned some good lessons. Um, you know. Uh, so I, I kind of, you know, minimized my circle, and I, and I had a plan. 
you know, a lot of us don't don't plan yeah, things. Talk to me about that plan. Yeah. Well, you know, when I, um, of course, I, I, was, I was incarcerated. And um, and when I was released, you know, I, from day one, I already had a plan. I knew what I, I, knew what I was going to do. And, you know, so I, I was really blessed, um, you know, to to succeed in, in some of the ways that I did, you know, after that. And, and, and one of the things was, you know, I, I felt kind of bad because all of my cousins and all of my peers and teammates and stuff had their college degree, but me. Because, uh, you know, when I, when I finished Wingate, I, I, I needed a semester to, to finish. To finish. And, but I, when I signed that contract overseas, I was, you know, that was the only thing on my mind. But anyway, I, I did go back to school and, uh, and, I, and I completed my degree. It took me a year to do it. You know, I, I was working 10 hours a day and, and driving 66 miles one way for a year. So when wow. people say you can't do something, you know, I, I just yeah. I ask them out because um, that was uh, that was something that um, you know I had to persevere, and that was hard. You know, I was married, you know, and kids, and, and had to work and, and do it. But it taught me a valuable lesson that I try to pass on to other people that go through barriers and hardships as well. You know, if you put your mind to it and, and feel like you can do it, you know, you, you just got to step out there on the faith and just do it. And, uh, and I think that was the biggest turning point in my life. You know, I started uh, learning how to network, you know, uh, connecting with people, you know, to help me, you know, get good employment and, and, and keep good employment. And uh, so I started working, you know, uh, uh, as a, a basically a human services worker about 20 years ago. And uh, I didn't understand how I got caught up in you know, doing that type of work, because at, at that time I felt like it wasn't my cup of tea. But uh, but I then I started doing it, and I saw how uh, impactful, positively, I was to to clients, the to other people. people. The other people. And, uh, Let's stop right there. All right. So, what you were doing, the plan, you saw how important it was to other people. Can you elaborate on that? What, what do you What do you mean? Yeah. What, what, what do you mean? Yeah, well, um, you know, I, I believe in in uh, leadership. You know, a lead by example. You know, uh, and that's what I try to do. You know, practice what you preach. You know, uh, um, you know, and that's what I try to, uh, you know, live my life like that. You know, uh, lead by example. You know, so I, I would see people go through uh, some of some tough things, uh, you know, in my work, my everyday work. I see people go through some tough things and like, man, how can you overcome this? I've heard so many tough things that people had but to overcome. But you prepared for it. Right, right. So, yeah, and so people call me and they say, man, you're just so calm and you're so laid back and you don't, you don't get upset and, you know, uh, you work with people very easily. And uh, so, so I, I realized that this is my purpose. You know, because wow. a, lot, a lot of people can't do this type of work that I do. I'm, I'm a case manager. So I work with my mental health, uh, substance use, alcohol. Uh, he prepared use. you a whole way. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Reentry, you know. Um, so uh, definitely it gave me a lot of patience and understanding. Yeah. So now I, I meet people where they're at and I try to go forward with Amen. them. So I don't, I don't prejudge people and wow. judge people off their pa of past. And I think that helps me. Uh, create and develop good relationships with the people that I work with. And uh, and because a lot of times that's what it's all about. A lot of people keep a lot of things to themselves because they are ashamed of they don't what feel, people are going to They don't understand. feel where the people want to live. They don't feel like they can overcome their past. And it takes me back to when you were incarcerated. I, I would come to visit you. Mm -hmm. I have no idea why, but I know now. Right. Because I was struggling with some of the same things. Could have been me. Mm -hmm. I knew it every minute. God's preparing me. He's leading me toward a prison ministry. That's what he's been preparing me for all my life. Well, I think like, why? There's a lot of things I could have been doing. I'm going to see Ed. Yeah. Dude, God is good. God has God has a purpose in your life. Yeah. And that was part of my purpose. Wow. It's part of what bonds me to you. Wow. You taught me a lot. Mm -hmm. You taught me a lot. Why you you fight what you fight, man? You taught me a lot, and to this day, you taught me a lot. Uh, but that's that's man, that's yeah, yeah. that's I call, I call that 
I call that yesterday's wave, man. Today, yeah. what you doing now? Helping people. Yeah. Impacting yeah. lives. And and, 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 and yeah, I told you the other interview we were doing, I talked too much, but I gotta say this to you. you know, God grabbed me one morning and he said, go do my will. What, you, what am I supposed to be doing? He said, Just listen to my voice. So here we are, mm -hmm. okay? Trying to impact some lives. Because what you went through and who you are today, people need to see it. God has a plan. And it wasn't for you to, to be back there. Right. That's part of the steps, right? Mm -hmm. People say you got 12 steps. 12 steps. I got 150 steps. But God don't want you sitting on step one. Right. Step 150. Right. right. So you work at a place where you run. Yeah. This, now this drove me crazy. <laughs> so tell me about it. You yeah. run for a living. Yeah, explain yeah. that. Well, explain that to well, us. Yeah, I work for. You, you can Google. It's called Running Works, and give you a Running Works. Yeah. And uh, what we do, we 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 help people get housing. This this has a lot of barriers, and uh, and they they subsidize. You know, uh, they pay a portion of their rent. But one thing we do, uh, we promote uh, health, and and what we do, we run. You know, because running and, and exercising is is one of the key components to getting through the everyday stresses, Absolutely. you know? Yeah. And uh, so it's a very unique uh, organization uh, created. And uh, one of my coworkers, he, uh, Matt Elliott, he he ran the mile in under four minutes. It's not not too many people can do that. I, so, in, yeah. in high school yeah. I could. Oh wow, yeah. Takes me yeah. about 12 yeah. now. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, so yeah, we, we, we promote that. And um, we had one client, he, he lost 100 pounds. You know, so once once you start, you know, losing, you know, physical weight and stuff, you know, you start gaining confidence, confidence yeah. and self-esteem and uh, motivation. Yeah, absolutely. You know, and then, then you feel like you can you can do something. Yeah. So you, you correlate those things in with, uh, you know, overcoming the barriers, you know, and then once once you start uh, getting into that healthy, healthy lifestyle and, and, you know, you forget about the drugs and the alcohols and yeah in the, the past and, you know, and, and you start uh, putting your head up, you start looking forward, you start, Walk straight. Planning, you start planning, yeah. you yeah. know, yeah. you start surrounding yourself around positive people, you know. See, and, I feel like I'm in church now, I'm like, go on right. now, yeah, go yeah, on now, yeah. go then, on now. And then, you, and then you, you have that support, you know, because a lot of people fail in life because they don't have the proper support mm -hmm. that they need. And uh, so we, we, we push that, you know, um, every day, you know, I, I get calls, you know, all, all the time, you know, uh, even off hours. And my wife's like, well, you know, she understands. She understands what, what I do. Well, you what have I, to have what a strong I, woman. Yeah, yeah, what I stand yeah. for. So, uh, you know, so I've been doing this, you know, every, ever since. I, I tried to uh, go to another uh, 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 job before and it, did, it just didn't work. So I, yeah. I came, came right back. And uh, so I've been doing it about right at 20, 20 years now. And, uh, it's been it's been a great great journey, you know. But I'm, I try to stay humble about it because I mean I see people, you know, from ten years ago and see me in the mall and say, "Hey man, I remember what you did for me. I appreciate you." Wow. And you know, because I used to work with uh, young adults as well, and um, you know, so I mean, a guy just put me in this position because you got to be very patient and you got to be understanding and you can't be prejudging, you know. And you've uh, almost had to have walked in yeah. those shoes yeah. to yeah. do that job. That's a very passionate job. Your wife has to be extremely proud yeah. of what you're doing every day out there in the world, Ed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, my kids are too, you know, they, they know what I do and they, they respect that. And uh, they send, you know, if someone comes to them uh, uh, and asks, is seeking help, you know, they, hey, yeah, call yeah, my dad yeah. up, yeah. you wow. know. Wow. And, uh, you know, so I've been able to, you know, help people get jobs help people uh, get their GED, uh, get into college, in the military, you know, you name it. Your I mama have, has to be, your mama, uh, and I hadn't even talked to her. I yeah. hope she enjoys it, but your mama has to be extremely proud, correct? Yeah. Francis, yeah. Yeah. beautiful yeah. Francis. Yeah, I mean, my mom, she, she's so always uh, supported me, you know, uh, you know, through the thick and thin, you know, uh, and that's what I felt like, you know, I had to, uh, you know, re redemption is, is, is big, you know, in my life. And yeah. So I just, you know, wanted to do some, uh, you know, turn things around and, 
and do positive things, you know. And uh, uh, so, like, you know, I don't look at my, my past as, as something that's uh, actually bad, you know, because uh, the life that I live now, absolutely, you know, absolutely. Um, you know, uh, it's creating a positive leg legacy within my myself. So let me see my, if I get this. In. So, redemption is the positive from the negative. When you wallow in the negative, you can't see redemption. Right. You can't see it. Uh, people, and I call it Caesar's world. You got to pay taxes, you got to get up, got to pay the taxi drive, got to pay the Uber. That's Caesar's world. Caesar's world, it's a hamster wheel that people perpetually stay on all their lives. Yeah. I tell this all the time. Yeah. Hey, the hamster wheel has no sides. Get off. Right. Get off. Right. So in, in Caesar's world, it's, 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 it's it's, everybody wants to stay in the negative part of your life. Right. God says, there's, a, there's a, my will has glory for you if you just take the step, right? Yeah. You took the step. He prepared you. Uh, and one of my favorite books of the Bible is Colossians, uh, and it, it talks about God's will for your life. It's simple. He has a will. But and I get redundant in all these interviews when I say this. You all, he gives you free will. That's the beauty. That's why you and I went through what we went through. We had decisions to make. Mm -hmm. We used our free will to do something that we wanted to do. Right. Paid the price. But now, you say, why don't people move toward Jesus? Well, they have free will not to. They like living in Caesar's world. Right. But at the end of the day, his will will be done. Yeah. He's a forgiving God. Yeah. But there is a limit. Yeah. And uh, he doesn't put suffering on you. Oh, but he'll let you suffer. He'll let you, he'll let you be a fool. Oh, yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah. So as you got to where you are, as you, as you got to where you are right now, tell me about the leadership in your sports. Stacy Leo, some of your go-to people, your coach at Wing, Winget, you talk yeah. to me about what yeah. you had to have go-to people. Good break point right there. So, I'm gonna I'm gonna give you a book that I've been reading, and it's called Family Driven Faith by Elsie Fitzpatrick and Eric Schumacher. Okay, I want to try that one out. I think it'll help you grow a little bit. Uh, so I'm gonna ask you one final question before we before we break. Uh, you look at the world today. If you could, if you could, in one sentence. See how long winded you are with a sentence. In one sentence, what would you say to the world if everybody in the world were listening to you? What would you say to them? Well, I, you know, just create your own destiny. You know, know, know where you, uh, you can create. You know, the journey that you, that you, that your life is is heading towards. You know, uh, and it's about uh, taking on uh, ownership. You know, a lot of us we don't do that. You know, we, we, we won't take on ownership and be uh, responsible for our own lives in a, in a sense. And, uh, and I think if, if more people uh, start looking in the mirror and, and get control, you know, I think we can, we can have a better world. But, but it's about awareness too. A lot of people are not aware of those things. Yeah. I, I did a lot of meditating and a lot of soul searching and, uh, you know, now, I, I would advise people, suggest people to, to do that, you know, do some soul search, you know, because and then go back to that being able to take constructive criticism, you know, that will make your life a whole lot easier and a lot smoother, you know, because a lot of people can't do it. They, they can't take constructive criticism. And uh, and I think being able to take constructive criticism helps you grow in all kind of different ways as a person. Amen. Again, uh, we're never going to be perfect, but you know, you can maximize your worth when you, when you put God first. Yeah. So I knew you'd turn a sentence into a paragraph. Yeah. But Hey brother, yeah. that's what I love. <laughs> so if I could sum up today, it's not about, it's not about remembering you or me. It's not, it's not, it's not about a legacy, it's about a legacy and it's about uh, Jesus. Mm. Uh, that's, that's what I'm picking up. If I'm picking up what you're putting down. That's what I'm getting today. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, uh, prayer is strong. Yeah. You know, I know I had a lot of people praying for me, and, and, and 
over the years, you know, and uh, and I pray a lot, you know. Uh, but I know prayer is real. Well, I say this. I, the locker room taught me this. When you with people who are connected yeah. and can get prayers through, yeah. everybody can't get prayer through. Yeah. When you group people to get prayer through, well, you better hold on for your life. <laughs> Huh? Yeah. And I yeah. used to pray. Man, I gotta pray, dude. I want to pray now. Oh, I get a chance to pray. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. yeah. It's been. You came from Charlotte up here a second time to get this right with me. Right. I think we nailed it today, brother. Oh yeah. I love you, man. Yeah, I love you, man. I love you. All right. I love you. Yeah. That's a wrap.